Welcome back to another episode of War and Cali. In this episode, I will detail the story of Bay Area rap legend, Too Short. Too Short was born Ty Shaw on April 28, 1966. Many people would believe that Too Short was born in Oakland, but actually, he was born and raised in Los Angeles, and in South Central to be exact. Too Short grew up in the formation of Crips and Bloods and was around a lot of gang members, but he actually avoided that lifestyle and never became a gang member. Too Short and his family would move to Oakland when he was around 14 or 15 years old. Moving to Oakland was a different world for Short. Oakland was more about pimping, crews, and blocks instead of the Crips and Bloods that LA County had. Too Short gained music interest with him being in the Fremont High School band and being a drummer. He was interested in all type of music, but heard rap for the first time in 1980. After hearing rap, he thought he could do it and decided to give it a try. By 1981, Too Short's mom would get him some equipment and he started recording his first rap songs in high school. In high school, Too Short would be getting teased a lot about his height, so people would just start calling him Short. After watching a prison movie called Penitentiary and the main character's name being Too Sweet, Too Short decided to add the name Too to the name Short and it would stick. Too Short would start recording his own music and putting them on tapes, along with his friend Freddie B. They would start selling them to all the drug dealers around Oakland, and this would lead to them making personal songs for all the drug dealers and charging them a fee. By 1983, Too Short was signed with 75 Girls Records and dropped the album, Don't Stop Rapping. By 1985, Too Short released his last album with the record label after he was told not to cuss on the album because his album wouldn't be allowed in record stores. In 1985, the album Players was dropped. In 1987, Too Short would release one of his most classic albums, Being Born to Mac, which he sold out his trunk independently and it sold over 50,000 copies. He had popular songs on the album like Freaky Tales, where he talked about all the women he had and described them and situations with them. In this album, he heavily talked about the pimp game and him pimping. This would lead to Jive signing him to a contract with the huge success that he had. In 1988, Too Short dropped the album, Life is Too Short with Jive Records, which became a major success. He would then go on tour with N.W.A., bringing him more stardom. Too Short would also be a part of a collab album with Dangerous Crew, his crew that he helped form, and they would drop an album with the same name as the group. It was members in a group like Ant Banks, Shorty B, Rapper Ron, and several others. Too Short was active in the 90s, dropping several albums. In 1990, Too Short dropped Short Dog in the House, which had lead singles like The Ghetto. In 1992, he dropped Shorty the Pimp, and in 1993, he dropped Get In Where You Fit In, which had lead singles like I'm a Player. But during this time period in Oakland, the street wars were treacherous, with non-stop shootings and killings. This led to Too Short seeing the danger in Oakland and decided to make a change and move to Atlanta for a safer environment. And bumping. Um, at one point though, you decided to leave Oakland and go to Atlanta. Well, the Oakland thing is, um, it just has to do with the, the streets that I ran through and the people that I hung out with, them at the time. And uh, I mean, point blank period, everybody knows the town split up in two. And not, not the entire town, but a whole bunch of people. And the numbers in the hundreds weren't cool. And it was, a, it was kill or be killed in a small ass town. And the numbers don't lie. In 1992, 1993, the homicide rate in Oakland was higher than it's ever been before or after. And we know Oakland has been violent and shooting. And it was everybody that I knew personally, like my homies doing it to each other. And I just, I went to the Freak Nick and had the time of my life. The Freak Nick was always my birthday weekend. In Atlanta. I, in Atlanta, Georgia. I, Nick, I'm looking at these big ass houses that cost 350,000. Right. Big I, ass I, yard. I went to your house in, Oak, in, uh, in Atlanta that one yeah. time. Yeah, I, a nice house. <laughs> so. I get back to Oakland and it's like murder, death, kill, murder, murder. You gotta like ride around at all times with a pistol. Can't, you know, it's just everything started getting real, like the rules changed because it's a small town and you got, you know, dozens of killers on the prowl looking to kill somebody. My homies told me, it was like, man, you still hanging around so and so and them, huh? I'm like, yeah, you know, bullets don't have no names, short, huh? I'm like, okay, so. What was it over exactly? 
I, if you want my version, you got to ask around. Ask, ask around, because I hear different stories. My version was uh, there was some, some, some kind of uh, lower level money guys at a dice game at a park one day, and it was some upper level money guys in the same dice game. And in uh, all dice games, you know, at some point in time, somebody's gonna fight or argue, and the fight broke out. In 95 and 96, Two Shirt dropped two more successful albums, one being Cocktails and the other one being Getting It. Both albums went platinum, and he was also on another collab album with Dangerous Crew. It was called Don't Try This At Home. He also did a successful collab with E-40 called Players Ball. After 96, Two Shirt decided to retire, with him being 30 and him not wanting to be an old rapper. And also, his favorite producer and Banks slowed down with music. By 1999, Two Shirt would decide to go back to music and drop two more albums, one being called Can't Stay Away and the other being called You Nasty. Both albums would go gold. His next album, Chase the Cat, would not be a success. Same with his 2002 album, What's My Favorite Word. But by 2003, Two Shirt would have a resurgence with working with Lil John, and his 2003 album, Married to the Game, would spawn hits like Shake That Monkey, and he also was featured on Lil John hits, Bia Bia. In 2006, Two Shirt dropped the Blow the Whistle album with a song with that same name, and that song became one of his biggest hits ever. The next year, he dropped the album Get Off the Stage, but once again, he would take a break from music. In 2010, Two Shirt dropped Still Blowing, followed by his 2012 release, No Trespassing. Him and E-40 hooked up on a couple collab albums like History My Music and History Function Music in 2012. Two Shirt wouldn't drop another album until 2018 with his album Pimp Tape and then in 2019, The Vault. And in 2020, another album with E-40 called Ain't Gonna Do It, Terms and Conditions. In 2020, Versus would become a trend where various artists would go head to head with their music catalogs and E-40 and Two Shirt would have a Versus battle going with their long catalogs of music. In 2020, rap legends Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, E-40, and Two Short formed the group Mount Westmore. They would release an album together, with the lead single being Big Sub Woofer. Outside of rapping, Two Short has acted in various roles in movies, as well as being in many documentaries. He played as Lou Loke in the film Minutes to Society, as well as being in the documentary American Pimp. He has also appeared in the TV show The Game, as well as a VH1 documentary called Planet Rock about the drug trade in the 80s. Two Shirt made cameo appearances in movies like Stop the Pepper Palmer. He also made two straight to DVD films like 2001's Too Short Uncensored, as well as being a part of a few low budget films. He's currently making a film about his life at the moment. Too Short would later become a first time father at the age of 52 years old. Like a lot of people I know and who went through this and people who I know who are going through it as a young artist or just a young man, just life sometimes, you, you, you know, you, you, I would have, I don't want to talk about another person. I would have been a young father who probably dove into my career and kind of looked back 15, 20 years later and go, damn, I was on the road a lot of time and a lot of, you know, you know, you look back and you didn't, you weren't there. Mm -hmm. And I just think that fatherhood came from me at a good time because I'm not doing that, you know what I mean? So I, I do have the ability to be there and be a part of it. And I'm, it's, it's a good timing for me because being such a music guy and, and the way I love my career and the fun I was having, I, I wanted to do what I did when I was doing it. I wanted to, I, I really wanted to be young and wild. I was, as a young kid, I knew I wanted to grow up to be a young wild. <laughs> like I, I, groomed, I groomed myself, I went straight into the this is what I want. I, I, I knew I wanted to be a player before I even lost my virginity. Uh, okay, uh, and you have a son, right? Daughter. Daughter. Yeah, man. Okay. They don't give old players sons. No, you got a daughter. like that. <laughs> Two Short is a rap legend who created a lane and a style that made him one of the greatest to come from California. His career has outlasted many rappers and he's been relevant for over 30 years. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.